So if you're using our WordPress course, this is another one of those videos uh, where we're talking about different types of plugins that I think are the most beneficial. And kind of just to review, what I did was I, I installed eight plugins that I thought were the most important. And I wrote, uh, I, I talked a little about each of them, kind of a very general overview, but we ran out of time, so I wanted to go through all of them, right? And I've previously already done the Jetpack, and I've also talked about uh, adding ninja forms in, in a whole separate video. And so in this one, what I want to talk about is the iTheme security plugin. And the reason why I think it's important is because, well, very briefly, what does the iTheme security do? And so it provides a kind of a, a second uh, backup or second security measure so that hackers cannot hack into your website. And I mentioned before that uh, one thing about the, one thing about these WordPress websites is yeah they're great but kind of like you can imagine like Windows how or at least how Windows used to be not too sure if it still is because I kind of migrated from Windows now to Mac is that Windows had a you know, good amount of viruses well the reason why it used to have viruses is simply because um, so many people use them because so many people utilize them hackers found it more beneficial or cost-effective to invest in a Windows virus rather than a Mac virus right um, now the tables will probably turn when you have more Mac computers being utilized so you'll have more viruses in that re re respect, right? Same kind of logic goes with WordPress is that because a lot of people use WordPress, a lot of people use that to design their websites, I think it's the number one used software, you can imagine that hackers will find it very beneficial to create some type of software, some type of program to hack into your website. Um, and you know, there's a number of things that they could kind of gain access to. For example, if you have users, you have a lot of users, you have a lot of email addresses, uh, and that's gonna be very beneficial for them. And I don't mean to scare you away and, and into not using WordPress, but what I do wanna say is that you should have some type of backup or some type of, you know, secondary security and actually a personal story that I had was a website that I, I, I ran or still run right now in its beginning months right it had around I, I believe around a thousand users um, because the way the website worked was it, it needed people to actually um, sign up right it needed people to register and sign up to the actual website for them to utilize a course that I was providing them right and so the issues with that was that well for one thing, um, you know, hackers would would, would have an easier time to just simply to, to hack into it. So they eventually did before I had this plugin installed. And so um, especially if you have these sign in, sign out uh, and, you know, register uh, buttons, it's going to kind of tell other individuals that, you know, you may have a good number of users on there. So it'd be kind of beneficial to break into. Um, that being said, once I added in the iTheme security plugin, well, now I haven't been, um, ha had no problems after that, had absolutely no problems, and that's been about a year and a half uh, from now, right? So kind of very briefly, what, what can the iTheme security do? Well, there's a number of different options. You can see there's dashboard settings, advanced backup blogs, and help. Um, well, the help is just for your own personal benefit. Uh, but there's many, many different things that it can do. Kind of the first question it asks you is um, to make the very initial, very basic level, um, I guess, security measure. Um, and that was, as soon as you install the, the iThemes, it has this banner that goes across and it says activate or something to that extent. And it, it lets you back up your, your database and it also um, provides you with the option to potentially make something more secure. It was just a very basic security measure. I don't remember exactly what it was because I just installed it and I accepted both of them. So you can just accept those. It is entirely fine. What I'm going to do now is actually explain, um, you know, kind of what some of the options that it can do. Right. So one of the things that it has is the security status. It gives you a security status if you scroll down. Um, and so it tells you what you need to fix, right? So if you need to perform a scheduled backup, just click fix it. And let's see what happens. All right. And so it should scroll us down to right here. So scheduling a database backup. 
save changes. How often do you want to schedule a database backup? And this is just for your database, not a full backup. And so um, I always suggest people, they, they should have, yes, they should have a database backup. It's good. But you also should have some full backup somewhere. Whatever program you use, you should have it somewhere. And I'll show you in a, in a future video. That's more of a more long-term thing that we'll need to do um, to f actually create a full backup. But for now, enable um, you know scheduled database backup let's just say three days that's perfectly fine if you don't update your website all that often three days that's perfectly fine you know there's nothing wrong with that all right so you know yes yeah, save that uh, we'll just go through the settings now right because that I just wanted to show you kind of if they give you these it's not really error message but things that you need to fix that's what you can do so um, so there's many different settings right there's let's start with the first one um, so this first one, the global settings, allow iTheme security to write to the WP config and HT access. Um, so you can, for, for me, I just uh, leave this blank. I, I, I disable it um, because, you know, for me, it's not something that uh, I necessarily want them to do. I don't necessarily want them to, um, to write to that, to, to edit something like that. Um, so I just leave it blank. But one thing down below is, uh, for example, let's see, you can blacklist uh, certain IP addresses, certain individuals, and that's good if you, you know, see some type of activity that you um, don't necessarily like or don't necessarily um, want these users to be on your website, say they're spamming it, you could you know, lock them out and uh, um, ban them from your website, essentially. Um, and so, you know, there's other options. Uh, this was simply, this was just the backup that we just did. Um, 404 detection. Uh, so what 404 detection is, um, so it prevents them from getting a large number of these 404 error message. And you, the, the assumption is that if, if they're, they're going that, it's somebody, if they keep receiving these 404 detection pages, it's probably an individual that you don't necessarily want going to your website, right? Because um, they are just kind of scanning, kind of just scanning the internet um, and you presume that it's some type of vulnerability, right? So that's why you kind of enable that 404 de detection, right? Um, and you can just change the, the options. But in reality, you know, you can just kind of leave them as standard, right? You don't need to change much about those. Um, you can save the changes right now. The, the way mode, what this is, it allows you, if, if you're not going to be, for example, if you live on the West Coast, right and you don't want anybody to be editing your website uh, you know that you're not going to be editing your website from the hours of for example 3 a.m and 6 a.m or something to that extent right you don't want people to be able to log in you don't want people to be able to log in um, during those times because chances are those are going to be individuals that are not yourself right so this kind of prevents uh, people who are not yourself who you know, may uh, be hackers or may just be people kind of browsing that shouldn't be. Um, and so you enable this away mode, right? So that's kind of uh, good in my opinion. Uh, so you can enable the ban users and uh, blacklist function as well. Um, brute force protection. Uh, this is just, for example, if you had what, what, the way they describe it is if you had a limited amount of time and you had an unlimited, um, you know, pretty much an unlimited amount of time to try every single password, right? Eventually you'd be able to log in, right? And these software that people have designed is that they literally can try every different type of username. Generally, they try the username admin because that's what a lot of people keep their initial admin username as just admin and they try a bunch of different passwords one two three four five six things like that um, and if you try enough times eventually you can log in and then you can gain access and so what we're doing here is enable this brute force protection so that the max logins per host is five attempts uh, the max login for a user is ten attempts and you can change whatever you want um, and so uh, they'll just remember it for five minutes and they'll log them out they'll, they'll actually inhibit them from actually logging back into the website uh, for X amount of minutes. Um, and so same thing with this, back up the full uh, database this as well, um, and they can send you an email, things like that. Uh, that's kind of self-explanatory. File change detection, uh, if there's a file change that uh, you don't necessarily want people to uh, 
change and it can notify you of these um, changes and give you a notification. Uh, hide the log in area is, I think, in my opinion, one of the best features. And it's very simple, but it's, uh, it's very nice simply because if you remember before, I, I mentioned that every WordPress uh, every WordPress uh, website, it starts out with this wpfaulttv.com, so your domain slash wp-admin in order for you to actually log in. Um, and so the benefit is that, or the downside is that if every website is this, wp-admin, well, it's going to be a lot easier for a hacker to just say, okay, let me log in to that domain.com slash wp-admin and then let me just try a bunch of different passwords and so this will allow you to say for example you wanted to change it to um, WP login right WP login would allow them to have the, the opportunity to you know uh, a hacker wouldn't necessarily know that that's where you log into your website right they're just gonna assume that's wp-admin so you can change it to whatever you want you know it could be even your name or something like that although I wouldn't necessarily uh, username but yeah you can have it to whatever you want same thing with some of these other options custom login action and you can just save that as well uh, it has this secure socket layer SSL that um, if you have that option not everybody has it uh, so if you do have this I think for most of the hosts I think HostGator actually does charge some type of fee per month to utilize this so um, that's why I don't have it I don't I don't utilize it uh, I, I believe that this would be very beneficial for, for example, e-commerce websites should have this SSL security, um, and especially with, when you're dealing with credit card information right on the website, right? You would definitely want to have that added security. For us, since we're just a blog, we're just a website, um, whatever you may have, if you are running an e-commerce website, which you can definitely do with WordPress, and I'll actually show you how to do that in a different tutorial, yeah, you know, you can definitely add that. So strong password. Uh, is pretty self-explanatory is that they have to if you if you ever see you know a website where you they say your password is not strong enough well this is to prevent uh, people from making really simple passwords and so hackers can just easily break into their accounts so they want it to be as secure as possible and you can um, you know specify who needs to have this um, secure or strong password enforcement uh, and there's just a bunch of other uh, options uh, the majority I kind of already went through the ones that I personally like to change uh, and then you can just save all changes right you, you know there's a lot of options that it would take a long time for me to actually describe what each of them are what each of them do there's even advanced settings um, that you can change but probably you don't need to go into the advanced settings because that's going to be just too confusing right it's just going to be too confusing for what we have to do backups will show where the backups are or it also have the settings and the logs as well Right, so as you can see, the, the, the capabilities of this free, this is a free security plugin, um, is quite robust. You know, it has quite a bit of power uh, built into it, and so that can be very useful for you. And it's just a good to have, even if you just don't have any options selected, but you just have the very basic security, I think, it, you know, it's, it's better than nothing, right? It's, it's better than just having your uh, site completely vulnerable. It, ha it has that extra added um, backup, right?